She rap a leg, body roll, she rockin' out. She rap a leg, body roll, she can do what nobody else can. She only get the real one. All right, welcome back. Unfortunately, Mrs. Tracy Davis and Celeste had to leave because of some previous engagement that she had committed to. So we're so sorry because I really wanted to explore that autonomy for Tobago. And if now is the time, given that 6-6 six, six deadlock, if now is the time to ensure that they put that on the table. Because according to Martin George, they will have to make some constitutional changes to the THA before they go back to the polls. Otherwise, we could end up with another 6-6 six, six deadlock and the issue would not really have been resolved. All right, but we have to move on. It's time to get into education of the children. And to speak with us is Trinidad and Tobago Unified Teachers Association President Antonio De Freitas about the phased reopening of schools that are supposed to take effect in February. Good morning to you, Ms. De Freitas. Good morning, Natalie. Good morning to your listeners and viewers. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you so much for being here with us. So we did hear from the Ministry of Education and the Minister yesterday that it is going ahead with the phased reopening of schools. Where does tutor stand on the issue? Well, Natalie, since the term, the academic year, started in September last year, tutor has been engaging in discussions with the Ministry of Education, with the Minister on the issue of virtual learning, remote teaching, and now on the issue of hybrid teaching. Um, we did, two Tuesdays ago, as you would remember, have a press conference to ventilate the need for the Ministry of Education to meet and treat with tutor as the representative majority union. And we are pleased to announce that last Wednesday, the Minister of Education met with us as the representative majority union. And there we articulated a number of concerns, some related to the reopening and some related to other matters. As far as the phased reopening goes, we, from what we have heard initially, we are satisfied that certain elements which we raised to the minister, certain concerns are being addressed and we hope for sustainability of attention to those issues. For example, the issue of the creation of the Education District Health Unit, which will be staffed in the first instance by the doctor and the 14 nurses projected. We understand that it is critical for all persons in the school environment to feel safe. Our concern, however, will be the issue of access given the geography of some schools, for example, um, let us take the district of Northeastern. When you have that unit based at the, perhaps the local health center in Sandy Grandi, and we have issues in Topo, in Matlot, in Grand River, um, timeliness is critical. So we would hope that as we go forward towards the reopening and as schools reopen, there would be a measure of scheduling, there would be further discussion into how that particular project would be rolled out. The minister made the point yesterday, Natalie, that schools are authorized to open during regular working hours and that students forms four, five, and six would be out to deal with the issue of SBAs labs and internal assessments to satisfy the requirements of the CXC body. Now, that is indeed something that we must attend to. You will recall that last year, as we went into the examination 2020, we had complaints. It was realized that there were a number of students who did not have the opportunity to properly do the SBAs or the internal assessments the way they should have, given the sudden disruption in schooling. This year, provisions have been made, but we must stress, tutor must stress, Natalie, that there is a matter of personal responsibility, not only on the part of citizens, but also on the part of students to take the necessary precautions, because Minister spoke, for example, about the social distancing and not congregating amongst the youngsters, those in primary school. But we know from our experience last year, we had some of that at secondary as well. So parents, as was said, must reiterate these factors to students. But we would not want to embark upon this phase reopening. And then we have to close the schools because 
we have cases mounting or because we recognize that the students in the secondary level especially are not doing what they're supposed to do. Additionally, as we have raised with the minister on previous occasions, timetabling at the school level is something that have, will have to be done, as was said, on a school by school basis to ensure that we do not have the congregation, but also to allow the teachers to balance the workload. Because realistically, students who are in four, five, and six, those teachers teaching them may still have lower forms to teach, forms one, two, and three, good? So they will still have to prepare for interaction with those students, whether they are doing practicals or so forth, or they are just continuing their online engagement, as well as teach their lower form classes. So what it requires in the first instance is the acceptance that the teacher's workload is still going to be rather challenging and therefore we are calling on parents to understand that at this time work-life balance for teachers is important additionally the student's mental health is important i heard that question asked the minister in the press conference yesterday and you know somebody has been saying we are planning as adults for reopening but we have not asked the students how they feel what they think. Tutor did a survey some weeks ago amongst the, some of its members um, from the secondary schools in terms of the reopening. And a couple of our members gave feedback from their students. And you would not believe, Natalie, how many students are concerned about health and safety, whether they have comorbidities or not. So the issue of personal responsibility will arise there. We noticed the uptick in cases over the last few weeks of the first year, the first month of the year. We would not want to see that increase. So TUTO will continue to review the guidelines that have been presented by the Ministry of Education. There are one or two little issues that we would want to make comments to the Ministry of Education on, but our guidance will be given to our teachers as to how we should proceed and ensure their health and their safety, their well-being is maintained. Right, but I think what I've heard from you in your response to my question is that there are issues that tutor is still concerned about, whether it's uh, the geographical location of those health units, you know, how t timely their response is gonna be to issues, you know, the workload of teachers, the children needing to take personal responsibility, but I don't think you've answered the question as yet as to whether or not tutor is in support of the phased reopening of schools? The issue of the support for the phased reopening of schools, that is something that I will want to comment on in our own um, release to the media, because at the end of the day, we knew it was inevitable. We are satisfied to this point that the Ministry of Education has listened to quite a bit of what we have to say, what we have said, what we have advocated for, um, obviously, our teachers and our students are still very concerned about returning to the physical space. So Tutor will offer its pronouncement of that shortly. And what of what we heard yesterday is that, you know, students, but also teachers have been accessing services to get help for their, for their health and their well-being, their mental health and well-being. What can Tutor tell us about that? Because it's one of those concerns, you know, for parents, for teachers, for students, about just, you know, the mental health of their teachers who, as you, you, you rightfully say, we have to consider their workload and how critical it is. You know, Natalie, whilst our education system focuses on the children, the state focuses on the children, and rightly so, we have to remember that education as a public good requires teachers, to educators, education professionals, to be comfortable, to be able to give out if we want to have quality education delivered. We have many instances where we've heard of teachers struggling, of education professionals struggling to balance the workload, where as single parents or as caregivers, they do not have a vast support network to assist them in terms of dealing with their children as well as teaching their classes. 
So what we are asking for is that level of empathy and support. We have some parents who perhaps because of their work hours would want to reach out to the teacher, but obviously reaching out to the teacher at 11.30 in the night, unless the teacher says it's okay, is a bit untenable. So what we have to do is ensure that not only is the, the um, student support services available for students, but that we have EAP available for our education professionals and perhaps consideration be given to having other providers lend support to the EAP program so that teachers are able to deal with specific issues with other mental health providers. The issue of trauma and management of stress are two critical issues that our education professionals are facing right now. So maybe we need to expand the support base because if the teacher is not able to give and deliver because they are not in a good place emotionally, mentally, we know the quality can be impacted. So we are urging that attention be paid to that particular aspect as we move towards the phase reopening. Right, so when you talk about the, EA, the EAP support group, just tell us what that EAP stands for and how do right. they support the EAP teachers? EAP is Employee Assistance Program, and it is um, an avenue available to workers in many institutions and within the public service to access counseling, to access support for your mental health, to be able to speak to someone about what you are going through. So the public service and the Ministry of Education, inclusive of that, we have a particular agency on board to provide services to those teachers, to our education professionals at all levels. That service is funded by the state. However, given the kind of trauma and stress that increased number of educational professionals have experienced one way or the other, Tutor believes that there may be need to expand the cohort of providers. So whilst we may have one agency in the Ministry of Education supporting educators, we may need to consider teachers, principals, guidance officers, school social workers, curriculum officers, supervisors, early childhood educators, accessing other mechanisms to get that kind of support and guidance that they need. Natalie, can you believe you are a single mother, you are a very good teacher on a daily basis. Parents are appreciative of your efforts, but you have your young ones at home, you have your toddler at home. There is no daycare available at this time. You yeah. teach form five and form six, and you are required to go to school as necessary. So apart from having to balance it whilst you are at home and deal with your toddler and your young ones, you now have to come out. But you don't have the support base. What do you do? That in itself is a stressor. That in itself can lead to some of us being unable to function the way we should. So we are not necessarily calling for the reopening of daycares and so forth. What we are asking for is that in collaboration with the Ministry of Health, that the Ministry of Education consider the emotional and mental well-being of our educators and that we provide some sort of support. Tutor constantly reaches out to members and lends support. We believe that the ministry needs to do the same. And is this one of the issues that you raised with the Ministry of Education when you were able to meet with uh, them last week, that, you know, you need more support for the teachers, you know, just to deal with their well-being, especially those who, as you said, who are good teachers, but might be a single parent? Not necessarily last week, Natalie, but we have raised it in the past. We have expressed the concern. And I do not think the minister is opposed to it but of course you have to look at available resources so we will continue to work with the minister because as the representative majority union we want to ensure that all education professionals are able to perform at the highest standard possible and so we 
continue discussions. What of that issue you raised with me two weeks ago where, you know, a decision was being taken to cabinet to look at the working hours of teachers and you thought that this cannot be a cabinet decision, the cabinet has no place in the making of decisions having to do with a tutor. Was that issue resolved? Yes, it was. We spoke with the minister on that last Wednesday. We had our say. The minister gave clarification, and we are satisfied that no such action will be taken. We also have the commitment from the minister of education that she will continue to work with tutor on dealing with issues pertaining to reopening and other long-standing matters. We will hold her to our word because the meeting was quite positive. There was no um, animosity or acrimony in our discussions, and we are willing to continue collaborating with the minister and the Ministry of Education. So come February, will we be seeing the teachers out in their numbers for those who are required to go back to the physical classrooms? Now remember, the teachers, Natalie, and the students are coming out only as required. So for example, I am teaching chemistry and my students have to prepare their, for their labs. We will be out as required. We would hope as well that, for example, those subjects, the science subjects, the CVQ and the tech box subjects that require support staff, workshop attendants and lab technicians, for example, that those persons will be out as well, the non-teaching staff, to lend support to ensure that the equipment is sanitized and so forth. We have teachers, the students who are doing visual and performing arts, for example, dance. The teachers and the students will be required to be out to discuss their SBAs, discuss their practicals. So they will be out as necessary. Other than that, you continue working in your virtual environment. But how are the teachers who have to be out in some instances and have to be online in some instances, how are they going to be balancing that? Well, that is a concern that we've raised repeatedly, and we raised that on um, our meeting last week as well. Um, we have proposed some suggestions. We are to have discussions with the principals' associations, the secondary schools' principals' associations on that. But it would require some creative uh, timetabling to ensure that these students get the necessary hours and, as I mentioned earlier, that the teachers are still able to balance with those classes that they have to teach the lower forms. So there will have to be, Natalie, significant discussion and collaboration and compromise first within the school between administration and the educators and then between the educators and the parents to ensure that all students at all levels are not are able to access nobody's disenfranchised but the teachers do not suffer but at any point in time. Are the teachers being paid more to do this kind of work? Because it seems that you keep talking about the workload, the workload, the workload of the teachers. Are they being paid more? Well, if you are suggesting this morning, Natalie, that teachers are being paid to need to be paid more, tutor will readily support that suggestion. <laughs> However, at this point in time, no. We are still, most of us, working on our 2014 salaries. And with that in mind, we are concerned by the recent pronouncements of the Minister of Finance in terms of being able to work with salary negotiations and subtle salary negotiations. We understand that the COVID-19 um, literally disrupted that process in 2020, but we would hope that as tutor enters negotiations with the chief personnel officer, there would be consideration given to the efforts of educators at different levels and the commensurate um, salaries would be worked out accordingly. So we are hopeful in that regard. All right, but we do have to leave it there, Mrs. De Freitas. And the thing with me is that I don't mind teachers getting paid more, but knowing me, I'm going to want the ones who are going beyond the call of duty to get it and the ones who are doing nothing extra to stay where they are. As, as in every profession, Natalie, and we continue as the union to try to encourage all educators to do the best and provide the highest standard possible of education. All right. Thank you so much, Mrs. DeFreitas. Thank you very much for having me. Do have a blessed day and all the best.
Thank you so much, and the same to you. Antonia De Freitas there, the head of Tutor, and she's been talking to us about the phased reopening of schools, and she says students, parents remind their children they have to employ some level of personal responsibility because while they'll be having those uh, health units out there to help, she's concerned about the geographical locations of them and how quickly and readily they'll be able to respond to, 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 to students in certain areas. All right, we take a break and we'll be back with you.